The majority of sport coaches are unprepared to help their athletes solve their skill issues because they've never really gotten to the bottom of this fundamental question. How do you learn a skill? In order to get to the root of this question, you need to start with two foundational motor learning principles. James Gibson's affordances theory and Nikolai Bernstein's hammer experiment. Affordances are the information that we perceive from our environment that afford the movement solutions that we take. And attractors are those movement solutions that are directly driven by the affordances. So there's this constant loop and interplay between the two that we commonly call the perception action feedback loop. The information that we get from our environment that creates these affordances is what we call optical flow. And the main hard solid truths of optical flow are called invariants. In the baseball game, there are a certain amount of invariants. The ball is always the same size, the mound is always 60 feet 6 inches from the plate, and the bases are always 90 feet apart. James Gibson famously said, you must perceive in order to move, but you must also move in order to perceive. In this sense, we need a constant optical flow to drive our perception, which drives our action in the task. So the better you act, the easier you perceive the task to be. This feedback loop is the athlete's direct perception of their environment directly feeding their actions. The best athletes in the world are not thinking more. They're thinking less and they're thinking faster because of it. They can turn the information of the environment into direct action much faster and much more simply because they're paying not only attention to the right things, but they're doing it in the right ways that allow them to do it faster and more repeatably. And this is what we call attractor states of movement. They fall into these stable states, into good habits, or bad habits that allow them to solve these problems autonomously without a ton of thinking. We kind of like to think about this attractor landscape as a deeper and deeper groove that's dug by more and more of this perception action feedback loop. This is how an athlete can fall into habits. So to break a bad habit, you have to slightly change the athlete's perception or their ability to act on the task to get them out of that hole. All this attractor state does is try and give them some semblance of task movement accuracy, which is where Bernstein's hammer comes into play. Bernstein's hammer is the original motion capture experiment where a blacksmith was tasked to hit an object over and over. What they found was that the most accurate expert blacksmiths had the most variation in their movement to solve the problem. This completely flies in the face of conventional thinking. People think that the best athletes have the most repeatable mechanics over and over. But what we recently proved in our motion capture lab is that the best athletes actually have the most variance early on in their delivery and funnel that to repeatable mechanics. Same with hitters. The best hitters don't only have one swing. They have a continuously adaptable swing that they can adjust to the affordances of the optical flow of their environment. It's also important to consider all of the ways that these elite athletes are collecting this information. Visual information caused by visual flow of how far things are away and how fast they're getting closer. Audio information that lets a hitter know how cleanly he squared up a ball. Vestibular information that uses the water in an athlete's ears to let them know where their head is relative to the ground and proprioceptive and mechanoreceptive information that lets them know how their muscles are working to know where their limbs are in space as they're moving. All of these combined pieces of information help the athlete solve what Bernstein called the degrees of freedom problem, which is that there's so many different ways that the athlete can move to accomplish the task. In order to sync all of those pieces up, you need to have direct perception of the information that your environment is giving you. It's really important to never view any of these pieces in a vacuum. There's all of these different pieces of information and the ability to act on them driven by the environment, the individual, and the specificity of the task. This is what we call dynamic systems theory, and it's one of the most groundbreaking pieces of motor learning theory to come out in the last 50 years. We'll go over dynamic systems theory in the next video, but the main question that I wanna leave you with is this. Why do the best athletes in the world seem to always think less and do more?